Good morning. Rise up in hope today. I am three minutes early because sometimes you just have to go. I'm, I'm sitting here and my heart is beating strong and I am thanking God for this day. And I'm thanking God for this devotion, which is embracing the season with God's angels, with God's angels. And it's been already an emotional morning because God is very faithful, a good father, faithful to his kids, and a good father protects his kids. And sometimes God sends angels for our protection. I want to just open up in Hebrews to set some foundation, some foundational work on angels because I think it's important. And then we're going to go around into the places where Holy Spirit is stirring our pot this morning on how he does what he does. So in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? There's a lot of meat in that one verse. Are not all angels, Paul is saying all angels, are ministering spirits sent to do what? To serve those who will inherit salvation. And the study app here is very, very powerful. Angels are God's messengers, spiritual beings created by God and under his authority. Colossians 1.16. They have several functions, serving believers, protecting the helpless, proclaiming God's messages and executing God's judgment. And for each one of those functions, they lift, they list scriptures. That's why I love the study app because you can study and you can, you can continue to study and you can continue, continue, continue. So here it says they have several functions, serving believers, that's based on 114 of Hebrews, protecting the helpless, that's Matthew 8, 10, protecting and pro, no proclaiming God's messages, Revelation 14, 6 through 12, and executing God's judgment, Acts 12, 1 through 23, and Revelations 20, 1 through 3. So you can replay this and study on your own what God has to say about his purpose for angels. I think it's very important for us to understand we are not to worship angels. We are to worship God and we are to pray to God for him to send his angels. We're not to pray to angels. We are praying to God. God is number one. God gets all the glory. God gets all our prayers. And through his word, he sends angels on our behalf to help us. So God's angels, angels are God's messengers, spiritual beings created by God and under his authority. So he gets to do whatever he wants to do with us and in our lives. And it's interesting when I read the very first function, they have several functions, serving believers, believers, serving you and I, a byproduct, a gift of believing and receiving and walking with Jesus is having God send angels to serve us. The second one, protecting the helpless. And this was the one testimony I was going to share with you. We have, I'm sure there's lots of times, I'm just going to fix the screen. I am sure that there have been lots of times in our lives where God has sent angels and we've been unaware of it, but there have been at least four very specific times where God allowed us to see the angel that was sent uh, for our protection. And at those times, I will say that we didn't ask. There was no time to ask. It was an immediate suddenly that we needed help and God knew it. And because of 
our relationship with God because we know him, we love him, we want him in our lives, we want him in our children's lives, we give our lives to him, we have a surrendered position, God, it's a byproduct. It's an inheritance that we get that we don't have to ask. God's already on it. And I love that benefit. I love recognizing that. And it brings me to an overwhelming gratitude an overwhelming gratitude. So what I wanted to share, I wanted to share you, share with you the very first time that Joe and I got to see an angel and experience an angel. Our first daughter was an infant in her crib. And at that point she was so little that the crib was next to our bed. And out of a sound sleep, I heard wake up. I heard wake up and I woke up and I looked up and in the doorway I saw an angel and the angel was pointing to the crib and I knew immediately I had to get up and go to that crib. And when I got to that crib, our daughter had wrapped the crocheted blanket and it was around her head and she was helpless. And here it says protecting the helpless. At that point she was helpless and I was awoken to get that blanket unraveled. I was, of course, did what I had to do. And then I, I'm waking Joe up and I'm like, wow, what just happened? It was the most beautiful, 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 beautiful display of God's love for our lives. And so when I think about that and God brings that to my remembrance, it is something that is worth sharing. And that was one time. There have been others, but because of time, we're going to move on. If you have angel visitations that God has allowed you to see, tangible, see, does, we don't need that because we walk by faith. And as I said in the beginning, I'm sure we are constantly uh, spared, uh, protected, delivered by angels that we're just not aware of. But that time was a very, very beautiful, different kind of a time because it probably um, spared our daughter her, her little life. So I'm grateful for that. I want to now go to the place in Luke where we've been studying. We've been in this place of studying Luke 1 and 2, and there's just so much angel activity here. There's so much angel activity, so I want us to look at Luke 1, beginning in verse 11, and then, then an angel of the Lord ap appeared to him, and this was Zechariah, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and a delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth. For, uh, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. And then I want to move on to... Zechariah questioning the angel. So, so yeah, when you see an angel, ask him, ask him whatever is on your heart. He won't be afraid and he'll answer you straight up. So here's what he did in verse 19. It says the angel answered, I am Gabriel because what Zechariah said, he asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. Verse 19, the angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I've been sent to you to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day of this, this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. So angels come and they have words to deliver to us. And Zachariah didn't believe. So he was silenced that that was the plan and that's what happened and then the good news was when the baby came god opened up his mouth and then now i want to go and move on to 126 i want to talk about the angel that promises the birth of jesus to mary in the sixth month verse 26 god sent the angel gabriel to nazareth a town in galilee 
to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And then I want to skip down to her questioning the angel. After the angel tells her all about Jesus, she says, how will this be? Since I am a virgin, the angel answers, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And then he says, the angel says, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month for nothing shall be impossible with God. Mary's response to that angel, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said, then the angel left her. Now I want to turn to chapter two in Luke. Chapter two in Luke, and I want to talk about the shepherds. And the angels appear to the shepherds. And here it is, two, verse eight. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. It's interesting that these three circumstances, everyone was greatly troubled, afraid, and terrified. And that morning, early in the morning, I looked at that angel, and when he pointed to the crib, I was terrified, because I didn't know what I was going to find. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rest. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And then I'm looking down here at verse 21. It says, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise Jesus, he was named Jesus, then the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. So there are many, many, many times in the word of God that God explains angels. I've looked up some scriptures this morning and I want to share them with you. Psalm 91 is a beautiful psalm of protection. We have, we have hidden that psalm in our heart. We have spoken it over our circumstances, over adversity, often. All the time, any time, we have spoken it when our daughters have been raging with fever. We have, God has blessed us with that word of his, that promise of his. And in Psalm 91, 11, it says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. So I believe when God commands, it's not a little, oh, by the way, if you have time, it is a command. It is a command. Angels, right now, that one needs you. Angels, right now, that child needs you. And I love reading how God commands because God, when God commands, watch out. The demons of hell tremble at God's command. And it says here, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. I love Matthew 18, 10. And this is where, where Jesus is talking about children. Children are precious, 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 precious to God. And they should be precious to us as well. Matthew 18 says, 18.10, See that you do, not, you do not despise one of these little ones. For if, no, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my father in heaven. I'm going to read that again and get it right this time. See that you do not despise one of these little ones talking about children. For I tell you, this is Jesus talking, that their angels in heaven always see the face of my father in heaven. So children 
are very close to angels and angels are very close to children. And that is God's precious plan of protection. And then I also want to read Exodus 23, 20. See, I am sending you an angel before you to lead you on. Psalm 78, 49. He unleashed against them. This is, he is God unleashing against the demonic realm and Satan and all of his cohorts, his hot anger, his wrath, his indignation, and his hostility. Hostility. Yes, God gets angry. Yes, God does send his wrath. And what does he do? He sent a band of destroying angels. God has destroying angels that will be sent at his command. That is good news. That is encouraging news. And that is a promise. This is a promise, friends. And then I love Hebrews 13 too. These are just some. You could do your own angel study in the word and be there a while because there are many times. Hebrews 13 too, do not forget to entertain strangers for by doing, for by so doing, some people have entertained angels without ever knowing it. I'm going to read that again. Do not forget to entertain strangers for by so doing. Some people have entertained angels without even knowing it. And that's interesting in the day that we living, we live in strangers, you know, we're just living in a, in a place where we have to be very cautious. We have to be very careful with strangers. We have to have discernment. That's why we need to be with God because Holy Spirit gives us great discernment on people, on circumstances. And here it says, some of them may be angels on assignment for your behalf. That is also a beautiful promise from God. A beautiful promise from God. So I just want to thank God that he created angels, that they're his beings, and that we worship God, and God through his word sends angels on our behalf for protection, for guiding, for leading. And I just want to say thank you, God. I just want to say thank you. I want to thank you for every time you send an angel on our behalf. I thank you, God, for every angel you've sent on the behalf of everyone listening to your message today on angels. I just want to say thank you. I want to say glory to you, God, because your ways are higher and your thoughts are higher. And I, I praise you for that. I want to ask you right now, God, according to Psalm 91, that you command your angels down for every person crying out to you for another human being right now. I ask you, God, to hear the prayer of the heart that's crying out for loved ones, struggling with depression, with anxiety, with, with all of the spirits that are not of you, Holy Spirit. I'm asking you to send your angels down right now on their behalf and fix what only you can fix annihilate what only you can annihilate through the power of who you are, God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. And I thank you in advance for the angels being dispersed right now at the sound of our prayer. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you that you sent angels all the time and you send them on our behalf all, on, uh, on assignment all the time. And for that we give you glory, honor, and praise this morning, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your plans of protection. Thank you for your hope. Thank you for your byproduct of blessing that comes with knowing Jesus Christ, receiving Jesus Christ, having a relationship with Jesus. And again, I just want to extend that to anybody who's listening who doesn't have that relationship. It is so easy to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You simply say, Jesus, I'm in. I want that. What does that look like? What does that mean? God, Holy Spirit, help. Help me to know you. Help me to find you. Help me to understand you. And God will meet you where you are. He will meet you in the simplest childlike way so that you know that you know you are being taught by your creator. It is beautiful. It is easy. It is accessible and it's available. The way, the truth, and the life is available to you right now today. And his name is Jesus Christ. He is God's redemption plan. And 
all those who believe and receive get to become children of God and get to have angels ministering to us throughout our lives. And it is a blessing and we are grateful for that. We are truly grateful for that. So God, I thank you for all of this. I praise you and I love you and I pray for all of this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.